welcome back to the Forge of Sagas. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the techniques that I used to paint all of the terrain that came in Kill Team Octarius in under 12 hours. It's not too hard, and it gives a really nice result, I think. So without further ado, let's get started. Once I cut all the pieces off the sprue and cleaned up any mold lines, I gave them all a spray prime with gunmetal. The pieces you see here are the only ones that I did any sort of assembly on before painting. You can see I added the spout to the tank and combined that, built up the little arm that goes with the oil derrick, put the facing of the oil derrick together itself so that's there, nice and simple, and then I attached these two tires to the columns they go in. Everything else I left unassembled to allow better access to different parts of the models. My first layer of paint is actually a wash. This is the brown wash from Black Magic Crafts. I will link the appropriate video down in the description. But I just came in and slathered it absolutely everywhere. This is going to form the base for a nice industrial grime that I've used on a couple of different builds. Orcs are always looting things from different parts of the galaxy as they go along, so you can expect that a lot of it's not going to be in great repair. This combination of rust and grime is going to give it this really battle-hardened feel, and it's really quick to do. It only took me 10 minutes of brushwork to apply it all, and then I let it sit for about 15 minutes in dry time. I recommend wearing gloves while you're doing this, by the way, because the washing get a little messy and obviously got all over my hands. <laughs> I wasn't quite satisfied with how the first layer of brown looked, so this is it after two coats of brown. So we're about 30 minutes into painting time and 20 minutes dry time, so about 50 minutes so far. For the next step, I mixed in some orange paint into my brown wash and then just began to apply it in a random stippling pattern. Some places I stippled, some places I did a little bit more of a dry brush, depending on what kind of textures I wanted to create. The key idea here is just to create some visual difference across all of your pieces. This random orange addition is just going to break up, give you a slightly different texture and tone of rust. That's really going to bring the piece to life. This took me another 15 minutes to apply, and then I let it sit to dry for about another 15 minutes. As I got towards the end of the wash that I had in my little shot glass, I started to get a little bit more paint than I had washed. And if this happens to you, it's perfectly fine. Just make sure you're a little more careful with how you stipple it on because that orange is going to be a lot brighter. You can use this to help pick out certain areas that have had a really nasty case of rust where it's that bright orange degradation as opposed to some of the mixed orange brown or brown that we've applied so far. So you can choose to go heavy on this, you can choose to go a little lighter on this, it's really up to you. Our next step is going to be a dry brush with a gunmetal. This is going to help brighten up the piece and bring back some of those steely points on the highlights that you would expect to see. You can see here that I'm using a makeup brush instead of a normal paintbrush. I've seen people use this kind of brush for dry brushing before, and so I figured, hey, maybe it'll work for me too. And it absolutely did. It really gave a nice even coating. It only hit the high spots where I wanted it to. There was never too much paint in the bristles. It was absolutely amazing to use, and it made this process so simple. Ten minutes later, it was done. Gave it five minutes to dry as it's a nice little dry brush. You're not going to be that wet in the first place. And then we're ready to move on to the next step. Nothing says scrap built terrain like chipped paint. So we're going to grab our latex masking fluid and a silicone tip paintbrush and apply that in random places all across the model. I was using the silicone brush here because if you try to apply this latex fluid with a regular paintbrush, the latex will bond to the bristles and you will have a heck of a time getting it off. Much simpler to use the silicone brushes. You would also use a really small sponge brush, but I felt to get some of the details I wanted, I wanted the control of an actual brush shape and the silicone brushes absolutely let me get done what I wanted to get done. I kind of just applied this randomly, just trying to see, you know, places I thought I might put some color on later because this is orc terrain. We're going to have some random, bright, orky colors in a bit. But for now, we're just going to lay this down, and once it goes on, we're going to give it about 15 minutes to dry. It took me about 30 minutes to apply all of the masking fluid for how much I wanted to have, but if you want to go a little more or a little less, your time may vary. As speed is of the essence, there are some places we're going to neglect. This is a speed paint after all. So when you're doing the platforms, you only have to do the top. No one's really going to be looking at the underside of these platforms, so we can basically just leave those with the basic rust scheme and it'll be perfectly fine for our purposes. This next step is where the speed painting definitely slowed down a bit. I grabbed an off-white craft paint and began to apply it in the different places where I decided that I was going to want color in the future. 
There's an old saying that goes, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And when you're speed painting, you don't want to have to go back and do a ton of extra cleanup at the end. So I worked with a smaller brush and just slowly picked out all the different panels that I wanted. This is another time where the amount of time you can spend working on this will vary. You could do it like the box art and only pick out the tanks and the little orc faces, and you could probably accomplish this in probably half an hour. However, this is going to be for my orcs, and my future orc army is going to be free Buddhas, so we've got plenty of looting and plenty of color, because, you know, it's a pirate's life. Should be exciting. All in all, I applied two coats to all the panels that I chose, and it took me about two hours to do with 10 minutes of dry time at each point. This was easily the longest step in my speed painting process, but I think it was well worth it in the end. Here you can see that I did indeed pick out a ton of panels, and on the walls I did both sides because you will be able to see some of that. But now, it's time to grab the contrast paint from GW. I got all kinds of colors. I got reds, I got oranges, some bright blues, and of course, orky green, because green is the best color. So I'm going to grab one of those colors, and we'll go with red to start with, and pop it open and just start applying it to whatever panels I want to be red. This part I just kind of had fun with and applied the paint wherever I thought it looked best. You know, sometimes I went down in a little red gas canister, you know, red fuel makes things go faster, you know, makes sense. Or, you know, other times I slapped it on a random panel, because sure, that can be red. I went through all the pieces with one color, and then started again with a different color. You won't lose any time to dry time at this step, which is really nice because the contrast will dry while you're working around it on other panels. This is a speed painting challenge after all, so anything I can do to save time is definitely helping. All in all, to get all of the colors down, it took me another two hours. Here we have a little shot of partway through the process, and you can see that I put on a ton of color everywhere. Given that it's all really bright primary colors, it kind of has a little bit of a Lego vibe, which I didn't quite intend, but that's okay, it'll sort itself out in time. Now, here's another thing which you can do if you want to speed this up, don't go into as much detail as I am here because I'm actually painting the individual wires. I have this thing, I just really like it when the wires are painted differently because, again, especially with orcs. They are salvaging wire from anywhere they can, the mech boys are just throwing it together, so they're not really, you know, thinking about, oh, blue wires mean this, you know, the red wire means this, the white wire means that, green wire is the ground, etc. No. All kinds of wires all over the place. If you want, you can skip these details, it'll speed up your time, but I think it just adds a little bit more to the piece when you have these little details, and it really didn't take me all that much more time to do. Now, if you get to the end and you have these extra white panels, you can go ahead and go back with the colors that you've used before and fill it in. Or you can choose to leave them white and we'll cover what to do with those remaining white panels in the next step. We've added a bright variety of color so far, but not a wide variety of metal. So I figured I could do some of these white panels that I had left with different colored metallics. I started off with this antique bronze just because it was very different than the steel and rust that we used so far and it would stand out. I also came in and touched up some of the other metal elements across the piece just to add some variety. Variety is one of those things that really brings a terrain piece to life, and you can also use this step to do a little bit of cleanup. Let's say you spilled a little contrast over or a little white paint that slipped onto another piece. You can go ahead and cover that up with these metallics, and it kills two birds with one stone. You're adding color variety to the piece and more visual interest, while also doing cleanup at the same time and therefore saving us time in the long run which is always a helpful thing when you're trying to speed paint. The next layer I came in with was a bright metallic silver. This is gonna help showcase some of the new pieces that the orcs have found recently and is still nice and shiny. This is just gonna, again, add another layer of visual interest, break up the colors a little bit, and again, just make it look like we did a lot more work on this than we actually have so far. It took me about 15 minutes to apply each metallic. I didn't have to wait for any dry time because, as with the contrast, we're working on different parts of the model throughout this process, so we don't have to worry about two wet paints interacting. That way, we can get right onto painting and continue on towards our finish. The last actual paint we're going to add to this is a layer of gunmetal. This is again going in to just clean up any areas where we had any sort of spillage. This is anywhere where contrast paint has flowed onto the metal anywhere where there's still a little bit of white showing, just anywhere there's any imperfection. We go in and we touch this up with a gunmetal, just so that everything looks uniform and like we painted it properly the first time, and 
didn't make any mistakes. One important tip I have for you on this step is if you have an area which is next to a large area where you have that base rust, make sure you feather out the transition nicely so that it looks like there's been a gradual fade from where there's slightly less rusty metal, which is where we're applying this cleanup gun metal, and the rusty base that we laid out at the very start of this process. Overall, cleanup took me about another hour and a half because I was really trying to be meticulous here. After that had dried for about 10-15 minutes, I came in with a black wash and began applying it all over the terrain. This will help tone down some of the brightness and the colors that I've added so far, you know, make them more fitting to the grim dark of the 41st millennium while still having that colorful, fun, orky nature. It'll also help blend together some of the different paints that we've added and create a more unified piece overall. Go ahead and go very liberal with this, it's not going to hurt it at all. If you think you've gone way too dark, you can always come in with another dry brush of the gunmetal and that'll look fine. It took me about 10 minutes to get everything washed and then I let it sit for 15 minutes to dry. The last thing we have to do is bring in our pencil eraser and scrape away our latex masking fluid to finally uncover those chipping effects. This is a pretty easy task, you know, the only problem is I didn't remember where I'd put it because, you know, I just went in randomly. So it was kind of an adventure to try and figure out where did I put it. You just rub it around with your eraser. Here I'm using the one on the end of a pencil, but eventually I got smart and actually grabbed a big pencil eraser, one of the big pink ones. You can also use your fingers because it'll feel different. You'll be able to pull it up with the friction from your fingers if you want to do it that way. But however you choose to go about it, this is the final step. It took me about 20 minutes to finish and then it was just time to assemble everything. Once you have it all assembled, it should look something like this. Of course, this video is about speed painting, so you guys obviously will want to know how long this actually took me to accomplish. To time myself, I used the stopwatch on my phone, and I just started it when I picked up my brush and stopped it when I put down my brush. I didn't actually time the dry times, as sometimes I had to go off and do other things as a part of my life. I didn't have any time where I could sit down for a full 12 hour period and paint. But on the clock for time with brush in hand, we have 9 hours. 15 minutes and 9 seconds. So we add in about two to two and a half hours of dry time depending and we come up with somewhere between 11 and a half hours and 11 hours and 45 minutes. So there you go. You guys can see now what you too can accomplish in under 12 hours of painting. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our future projects. If you have any suggestions for other things you'd like to see, feel free to leave your suggestions down in the comments. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you again the next time we ignite the Forge of Sagas.